Hello, I'm Liz Lumley of Finextra, and we're here at Payments Innovation UK, and right now I'm speaking to Karen Wendell, CEO of Ident Trust. Um, so you, you uh, spoke uh, on the panel before lunch here, um, and it, your, your company is a lot about identity. And, and uh, before you spoke, uh, Dave Birch, who's a bit of a provocateur in our industry, um, he spoke about uh, regulations like KYC and anti-money laundering, which uh, he called pointless regulations, especially in terms of competition and new entrants to the market. Um, do you agree with that? You know, I love Dave Birch. And I love your categorization of him as a provocateur because he really does think out of the box. And his point about the, forgive me for repeating the word, but his point about the pointlessness of KYC and AML is driven by the fact that there are some aspects of KYC and AML that if you're on the receiving end of it can be really awkward. And they do create, there's no, I don't disagree that they do create unnecessary friction particularly on the consumer side of the house for people who want to open bank accounts or engage in financial transactions. But, you know, that's sort of like saying that because it is throwing the baby out with the bathwater. It's, it's saying that because it's a difficult process, that there's no validity in it, there's no use in it, there's no benefit to it. The reality is that the way the world works today and the way everybody's interconnected our financial systems are, as I said in my presentation, they're the bedrock of our civilization. And anybody who gets into those financial systems can, by their very nature, impact everybody else. So could it be sort of what some people call, you know, KYC is using a sledgehammer to crack a nut then? There, there are some aspects of how people interpret KYC that can be a little bit on the excessive side. So let me give you a couple of examples. Different people interpret the requirements for KYC differently. And one of the ironies of the KYC environment and of know your customer in general is that the laws themselves are actually not onerous. The, it's the way they get interpreted by the banks that makes them onerous. Mm -hmm. And so in, in going out and railing against KYC, it's not know your customer that is fundamentally at fault. It's how banks have chosen to implement it. Okay. So I'll give you a very specific example. So in Argentina, as a perfect use case, the way the laws are written, they say that you have to provide proof of identity. And they give you about seven different ways that you can provide proof of identity. One of those ways of providing proof of identity is to, give, to provide a copy of your mother's birth certificate, <laughs> believe it or not, in Argentina. And since all of us, of course, always carry our mother's birth certificate around with us everywhere we go, it's very easy. But it's just one of seven. And banks have the option of choosing from that list of seven. However, a number of foreign banks who have gone into Argentina look at that list and, and they say, oh, we seven. have to do all seven. So it's not that there's anything wrong with KYC. KYC is still a valid point. You need to absolutely know who is getting access to your banking systems. The fundamental underpinnings of all these systems is at risk because you could have bad actors getting into these systems and doing things that you have no visibility into. So I believe that the problem with KYC isn't the premise of KYC. It's the implementation of how different people interpret KYC. Mm -hmm. And that's where regulators can help. Okay. Because regulators can, once they've gotten the feedback in terms of how all this works, they can go back to their original laws and then the associated regulations that come with that, and they can be smarter about how they tell people to interpret them. So I don't think KYC is crap at all. I think it's the interpretations can be problematic. Do you think it's probable that regulators are going to be smarter? I think that I, I have an aspirational view of the world, Liz, which is that I believe that eventually systems improve themselves. And I think one of the things that we have learned since the financial crisis and through all of the things that have been happening, all of the breaches in security, all of the losses that came as a result of the financial crisis, as, as a result of the mortgage crisis, all the things that we're seeing with the high profile hacks like Target. Yeah. I think what's going to start happening is more and more people are going to be saying, look, we can't count on companies to self-regulate. We can't count on all of the banks to be able to cover every base 
that they think they have to cover. We can't count on consumers to do these things. We need to provide them with some guidance. And we need to be smarter about the guidance we're providing to them. So I think that there is going to be an evolutionary process. It may not happen overnight. It may take three to five years. But I do think regulators are going to get smarter. So I want to go a little bit into your presentation because you, sure. you went through this sort of the single node payment into this sort of multi-huge, rainbow colored, uh, multi-node payment world. I'm what, glad you like the colors. I did. So I'm glad to get people engaged. <laughs> what impact is that going to have on identity? So the, the, one of the, there were three things I wanted to convey in my presentation. The first one was that, you know, there is, that identity isn't just about people anymore. Identity is about people, things, uh, both living things and inanimate things. I'm, I'm waiting for my fridge to order milk. That is my, my dream. Move to San Francisco <laughs> and we'll yes. get you set up. Um, but the, uh, the, so the premise I wanted to, the, the message I wanted to communicate was that there are lots and lots of things that are interacting with each other in the world today in ways that we haven't previously thought about. And so in that new world, there, that, what that means is there are lots and lots of different connection points. So my example of the refrigerator contacting Amazon, Prime, Amazon Fresh to make an order for milk to be delivered to me, and then Amazon Fresh contacting my bank to basically take out the $3.50 that it costs. There are, in that particular scenario, there are six different nodes. There's the refrigerator, there's the Amazon Fresh, there's Amazon Fresh talking to their bank, there's their bank talking to my bank, and that money coming into my bank account. So there are all these different nodes of interaction. And if you're going to be moving value around in all of these different scenarios, you need to know that each of the initiating points or the receiving points is who they say they are, and that there's some element of surety in what you're doing. And so the, the picture I was trying to show is that there are going to be lots and lots of different ways to have some form of value transfer initiated. And they may not all come from a person. They may come from things. They may come from an animal that goes through a feed line. It may come from a uh, communication network that sees that a particular set of transaction flow is going through it. It's going to come from lots and lots of different places. And so what that means is that all of everything that's connecting into everything else needs to know that it's connecting to the right person and, or thing or network or server and not to the wrong one. And so net-net is the world we're in is a multi-connection, multi-level, complex, convoluted, ever-changing world where connections are being made and lost constantly. And in order to make certain that you're safe in that environment, each of the ends, each of the connection points, needs to have some form of identifying itself so that you know that there are not bad actors in there. And that's what that picture was trying to show. Now, are we going to get there tomorrow? No. But if you have that environment, what you will have is a completely self-aware network where the basically a lot of the things that you pay for now that you have to think about paying for, those self-aware nodes will know that you wanted to do something. They will know that that interaction occurred, and they'll take care of paying it for you. Mm -hmm. But they'll only be able to do that if you trust them. Excellent. Machines are self-aware. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> Skynet reached, what was the term in, in um, Terminator? Skynet reached self-awareness or something like that. That's what this is. You're going to have all of these nodes that can be self-aware.